Hello again, and welcome to Ecology Birthday Week Talks. I am Tony Lee Hazlitt, Ecology faculty member, and it is my great honor and privilege to bring to you a panel discussion with four amazing ecologists. And today we are going to be talking all about triads. Um, with me here, I have uh, Ed Keating, who is also Ecology faculty. And before we introduce the triad hosts, and our special guest panelists, I just wanted to take a moment to briefly uh, explain what is a triad inside of ecology. So Ed, just over to you, if you could give us a, a, an example or a description of what a triad is. Sure, thank you, Tony Lee. Uh, it's great to be here today. Uh, a uh, triad is really where we get an opportunity as coaches or coaches in training, or maybe somebody who's just starting out learning uh, to put into practice some of the learnings from the coursework. Um, on the different modalities. And a triad is where we all gather in a Zoom room, much like uh, what you're seeing here today. Uh, and uh, we have an introduction of a topic. Uh, and then one of the hosts will provide a demonstration of a specific coaching technique uh, with a client in the room. And that takes about 15 minutes or so, uh, followed by any questions about the technique. And then what we do is in the electronic setting in Zoom, we break into separate rooms where there are three people in each room. That's what makes it a triad. So in that room, we have three uh, 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 the participants volunteer to take on the position of client, coach, and observer. Usually the observer is somebody who has been involved in triads before. Uh, and so the whole purpose of all of this is for people to get practice and practicing techniques of coaching. Uh, and especially within that breakout room, uh, that they get to learn and get some feedback, uh, the coach does from the client as well as the observer to provide specific feedback about how that goes. Uh, and this is really a tremendous opportunity to actually start learning some skills and putting them into practice. Uh, so that's, uh, I think, pretty much in a nutshell what a triad is. Um, Great. Um, and thank you for that, Ed. Now, it is my honor to introduce to you uh, these fine individuals you see on the panel discussion today. Uh, the reason we invited these individuals to be on the panel discussion today is due to their immense participation inside the ecology platform as leaders within ecology hosting triads. So we are going to hear from these fine individuals. It is my honor to introduce Dennis Fatry from France. So Dennis, if you wanted to just say hello and maybe share with us uh, what type of triads have you been hosting inside of Ecology? Yes, hi Tony, hi everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, I've uh, co-hosted um, first a member triad um, and uh, then I uh, co-hosted with Ed an NLP triad series. Uh, and then I got to, uh, to co-host uh, uh, the Skilled Helper Triad uh, series twice, uh, then a CBT Triad series, and then a Life Coaching Triad series. And yeah, upcoming other triads among which Skilled Helper. You're definitely, you're definitely well involved and known sort of in our circles as the Skilled Helper guy. <laughs> Yeah, kind of. <laughs> you know, you're always expanding and growing. That's one of the things that um, we really appreciate about you, Dennis, is your your willingness to expand your skill set. Um, so thank you for being here today. Thank we you. also have uh, with us from the northwest part of England, we have Michelle Wiseman. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Danny Lee. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, my experience with triads. I started with the triads before ecology, um, going back now to the, towards the end of 2017, um, once the triads were just starting out um, and then obviously moved on further with ecology when that became live. I've done CBT, life coaching and a mixed bag. I've helped um, kind of fill in for people and I've recently just taken on the beginner series, which has been such an honor. Uh, with next this week, actually tomorrow, we have the final of the three series, the beginner series, which has been a real eye opener to be able to give the trials to to new people joining a college. So that's me. Thank you. Yeah, Michelle. Michelle has been one of our uh, members that has been consistently there um, and has either been attending triads or um, in the last few months really stepped in to help us. Uh, 
provide these opportunities, these training opportunities for other ecologists. So Michelle, we are certainly grateful for your leadership and your participation inside of ecology. And uh, we also have with us, calling in from my province of Alberta, Canada, we have Sarah Helberg. Sarah, hi, we're gonna hear from you and what a, tell us a little bit about your triad hosting experience. Yes, I'd love to. Um, yeah, I started uh, the lovely Ed Keating co-hosting. He mentored me kind of through the first triad series, which was the mindfulness uh, series. Then I've done a multimodality. So that's where we take one session from each of the different courses. So we can kind of test the different ones and then another mindfulness as well as life coaching. So, yeah. Well, great. Um, Ed, let's hear from you. Uh, you know, you're, Ed's calling in from Florida and uh, he lives right near Disney World there, which is kind of fun. But uh, let's hear from you, Ed, uh, a little bit about your triad hosting experience. Sure. Uh, my first triad hosting experience actually was with you, Tony Lee. Uh, Tony Lee brought me in as a co-host uh, working on the mindfulness triads. Uh, from there, I went on to do uh, life coaching triads. Uh, I had done um, uh, NLP triads uh, with Dennis, as he's mentioned. Uh, skilled Helper uh, was another one that Tony Lee and I did together. The, that was the first iteration of the skilled helper triads and that was exciting starting out that as, as something uh, something new from the skilled helper uh, uh, course uh, as well as um, counseling um, I had helped work on developing the counseling triads and that was really exciting to uh, to be involved in that and uh, um, co-hosted that right now uh, uh, the other is the beginner triad series um, and, uh, and right now I'm hosting an NLP series again. So, uh, it's very exciting and it's exciting to, uh, to work with, uh, with the new hosts, uh, as they come into the lounge, uh, come into the lounge, come into the, what we call the, the, the triad host lounge, uh, where, uh, we have people who are interested in becoming, uh, uh, triad hosts, um, and, uh, uh, have shown, uh, participation in the, uh, in the triads. And I just want to jump in here, Ed, and, and just make a mention that uh, one of the reasons that you are an ecology faculty is not only did you start hosting triads, but you really took ownership for cre the creation and the direction and really helping with the standardization of this process so that when people come to these triads that they feel comfortable, that they feel um, they feel they feel like there's uh, an opportunity for them to come in and learn. So uh, next question that I'd love to just kick off this conversation with is I'm going to pose the question um, to all of you. What was your first triad experience like for you? Um, and what was it that made you want to come back? So let's open up the floor um, to Michelle or Ed or Dennis or Sarah. Uh, what was your first triad experience like? I'll jump in since uh, since I, I still have my microphone open. I was scared. I was nervous. Uh, I I didn't know I didn't know what to expect, um, and that's why you'll see a lot of times when people post on ecology that they're interested in triads, but they're a little nervous about them. That's one of the other reasons that I really wanted to get the beginner triads going is for people to ease into it if they if they feel that's appropriate. But I was nervous. I didn't know what it was about. I felt like I, I might be put on the spot, um, but I tell you, uh, it was amazing. Uh, you know, when I got in there, I was the client the first time, which is what they recommended. Um, and um, and I can't even remember what the topic was. It might have been about limiting beliefs or something like that. Um, and I, just a few simple questions and I got some insights and I was like, wow, this is cool. Uh, and someday I want to be able to coach, you know, and, and play the coach role. Um, and that's what brought me back was that I realized, you know, this this is involved, uh, but it's not rocket science. A lot of us already have these skills. Um, and uh, so anyway, so that, that's what brought me back. Great, thanks, Ed. I can go next and share. So I, yes, I was also the client, which I'm sure most people were, as that's kind of the, the natural progression. Um, but yeah, I, I also don't remember what the conversation was other than that it was like I got that full on like vulnerability hangover. Like I got really, I felt really exposed. I had a great coach that really like dug and I was like, ah. um, so while I felt that there was trust with the coach to open up, I felt like th does, does people show up and be emotional in these coaching rooms or is it just me? 
So that, that was a bit of a, yeah, I had a bit of a vulnerability hangover from afterwards, but then I felt like, well, I got a lot out of it and that having that trust with the coach to allow myself to kind of be exposed. It was a really, once that hangover had settled, it was, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go back for more. And then I realized that, yeah, sometimes it's emotions come up and sometimes it's not because that's not really what the triad is about. So just being really open to that experience of whatever, whatever is being um, the modality and the framework that's being practiced in the triad. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, for me, it was um, uh, that uh, member triad that uh, I first went to, and we were just the three of us, the host and, and two uh, participants. And so they asked me, what, what role would you like? And I was like, oh, I, I thought I would just like watch you guys do it. And they told me, sorry, there's no such role as spectator. So I said, well, okay, then, then client. So I, I became the client. It was about limiting beliefs. And since we were just the three of us, we, we had so much time. So then they said, okay, now we switch. You're the coach. I'm like, no, 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 no. But yeah, they left me no choice. And, and I got to practice. And obviously I was reading the questions. But but the person really had a breakthrough and and I came out of that and I was like, oh, is that easy? You know, I was like imagining, you know, coaching is like something like rocket science, like you say. And and it was like, you know, that's that your favorite chocolate that you take one one piece and you're like, I want more. I want more. So that was what I what I came out of. And I couldn't wait to go back. Thanks, Dennis. How about you, Michelle? Oh yeah, that word there, addicted. I became addicted very, very quickly. Um, but when I started joining the tries, there were only once one, once per week. So it was like the highlight of my week. The first one, yeah, a little bit chaotic back then. We were talking a couple of years ago, but um, it was that fear of the camera. The camera was the biggest issue, knowing that you're going to be in a room with people and you have to turn the camera on and you have to speak to people. Um, but the experience was addictive. Watching people progress, watching people grow, knowing that people were there, just there wanting to support you, guide you, help you, and now seeing what it's grown into. It became very, very addictive, very addictive. And I'm still here, so <laughs> need some help for the addiction. <laughs> Thank you. No, we want you to keep coming back. We, we like, this. I think these are good things to be addicted to. Um, for, for myself, I had the experience of being very terrified to click the join button. I remember shaking. And when I joined uh, my first session, I offered myself up to be in service to the practicing coach as a client. And I had an experience where I genuinely brought my stuff to the table and like Sarah said became vulnerable and worked on some stuff but the cool thing is is that uh, the thing that I was working on uh, ended me ended up with me actually creating tangible results because within a week within seven days of my first triad I actually landed my first paying client in a really long time for coaching because I was able to break through some of my some of the stuff that had been blocking me so um, I know for myself, even being a participant in the, in the coaching of, of the triads, it has is, is actually profoundly impacted me. So um, next question for you guys, what has inspired all of y'all all to want to step up and be a leader of the triads? So um, yeah, like it, it's one thing to go to a triad and participate and practice coaching, but it's, it's, it's a whole other level of being in service to want to step up and lead these four other people to come and join. So what inspired you guys to want to be a triad host? I'll go on that one if you like. Um, well, I was actually, it was a, as I said, going back then, it was, it was offered. It was, okay, we're going to need some guys. You've been coming to these triads. You've been participating week on week. Um, how about you been a go? And I was like, whoa, 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 no, that's, you know, you've crossed the line. I'm not going to be able to do that to facilitate. Um, but at the same time, there was a passion. There was something I believed in. There was, there was potential. That's what the, the heart, my heart saying there's potential here. Um, you're providing the space, the training for people to actually have real life experience training, putting everything that we're learning within these sources into practice. Um, so it was a, it's impossible to say no. 
Um, so that was mine. It was I was offered. I believed in it, and I saw the potential, and um, and it just grew from there. Really. Back in the days, eight hey, Tony Lee. <laughs> yes, back in the days. Um, so uh, who who else? What what other reasons? What called you to want to be a, a, a triad host? Well, for me, it was a bit different because you know I was participating in that that member triad, and and the host had some some other course to do outside of ecology. So she sent me a message saying, "Would you like to take over uh, hosting?" Uh, uh, obviously, I was hesitating. I was uh, you know scared, but at the same time, the challenge and uh, really you know tickled me. So uh, yeah, I said yes, and and so I started hosting those, and and then you guys offered me to to become an ecology host, which was which was the, the next step. So it was it was fulfilling my 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 desire also to give back to the community because I was I was hooked to try it at, at the same time I was going to so many everything I could, and I was I felt I was growing so much. And, and I was getting so much from the community. So I was really looking forward to giving back. And that was a perfect opportunity. Yeah, Dennis, I just wanted to clarify too, for those of you uh, who are wondering what Dennis is talking about by a member led triad, inside of ecology, we have ecology triads, ecology led triads that are always uh, served up in the same way. There's a specific structure there's a specific standard in which we deliver the modality. But that's not to say, you know, if you're an ecology member and you look at the calendar and go, wow, none of these triads are in my time zone, then there's the opportunity for you to start up your own practice triad. There's nothing stopping you uh, from putting an event on the calendar and saying, hey, I'd like to practice. Who would like to do a practice session with me at this particular time? That's how I started. Um, was just by tossing out times, hey, peeps, let's get together. And, and this has all just grown and evolved that way. So thank you for sharing that, Dennis. Um, let's, let's hear from Sarah. Yeah, I think that the common theme is that I, I didn't feel ready either getting asked if I, if I would, would consider hosting. Because uh, yes, I was also addicted. I was also showing up to two or three maybe four triads a week um, to really submerge myself in it. Cause it's, yeah, once you start to see, like get your own breakthroughs and, and, and facilitate that in others, it is extremely rewarding to, to see these people grow. Um, so yeah, my, my first initial thought of that was like, well, no, I can't do, I, I, I can't host. Uh, and then eventually came around like well that's a that's a comfort zone stretch and it's going to feel uncomfortable and we could choose to to grow or we can choose to stay smaller um so it, it was it was yeah it was the growth and the connection i felt to the community because when you're coaching and being coached you get to know people really well and when you keep showing up to the same time slots usually the same people show up so you you, you feel really connected to these people and uh, that, that was part of it to, to like Dennis was saying, to the, the, be able to give back and to contribute and to step up um, um, and to offer even more. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Sarah. How about you, Ed? Yeah, I, you know, uh, it's been really great hearing, uh, hearing everybody share. Um, I, you know, I'll take, I'll take one element kind of back to what uh, Michelle was talking about, the addiction. I mean, I was going to as many triads as, as I could a week and, uh, and got involved in, um, uh, uh, Tony Lee had asked me uh, to, 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 to get involved. And it was like, it was like I needed an additional fix um, in addition to just going to the triads. Um, and it's always been part of my nature to kind of, you know, especially when I find something of great value is to give back as others have talking about. And, um, and I've always, you know, one of the things I've known about myself for years is that I, I am a teacher at heart. Um, and so I love being able to share it and help sharing with others. And I also knew on a selfish level that by, by hosting, I would learn so much more about each of the different dynamics of of the coaching techniques that whatever I was uh, I was uh, hosting or co-hosting with, um, uh, at, at the same time of helping people, and it's like you know it doesn't get better than that. It really doesn't. Uh, and there's nothing like trying to uh, host triads and get a real 
more in depth understanding of, of the uh, of the tools and the techniques that we have. Uh, and it's and I tell you, I and 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 you would even share this, Tony Lee, as Tina did and others, is that as you as you start going to triads, and, and Sarah was talking about it too, is that the community starts to develop. A lot of the same people will start going to triads around the same time. Um, and their sense tends to be a flux. And so you do start to build community. And one of the greatest aspects of hosting, as is also training hosts, is that you see the growth in people. You, you see that person that I was what, coming in scared and a little bit afraid to put myself out there then realizing that this is a safe environment, that we have all created this. And it's not just, you know, it's us, the leaders before us, but everybody who attends the triads is there to be supportive with each other. And, and to then see that growth and people coming out of themselves uh, and really applying and seeing the skills that people already have when they come into the triads and as they become comfortable that starts to come out and you start to see that and you see them grow and then start applying all these lessons. And to me, that's the magic sure. of what we have here. Uh, and, uh, and so it's, it's like one of the best games in town. I tell you, it just is, it's just like, you know, when we coach, yeah. it's like when we coach and we see somebody grow and we're just one part of helping to facilitate that. Well, and that's, and that's, that's just it. And that's what ecology is here for. Right. If you look at the big vision of ecology, what we're here to do is we're here to change an industry, an industry that is typically denied people access to this information and these opportunities due to high cost barriers. And what we're doing inside of ecology is giving people the opportunity to practice their skills and receive feedback so that they can actually become competent. Now, here's the thing that, that I'd like to just, just share is that um, like anything in life, we can't learn things by osmosis. We can't learn how to ride a bike by watching Kane Ramsey do a video on how to ride a bike. We can't ride a bike by reading a book about how to ride a bike, right? We can't even learn how to ride a bike by attending a training and watching other people ride a bike. So these triads are opportunities for people to come in and learn how to ride the bike of coaching. And yeah, you might wibble, yeah, you might wobble, you might fall down and scrape your knee, but it's a safe place to to practice so that you can build those competencies, you can practice these various modalities, um, you can really entrench your learning into your competencies. And what, what Ed is talking about is, is that in the triads, we see people come to the triads for the first time with no clue how to even coach. And, and within months of, of regular and consistent attendance at these practice triads, they become, they're becoming experts on how to ask these powerful questions. So um, one of the questions that I'd like to, to ask all of you guys next is what, what specific skill sets have you developed by being a triad host leader and being involved in the triads? How has, how has attending the triads enhanced your coaching? Who'd like to take a crack at that first? Well, for me, I have a, I have a very good uh, um, uh, experience with that. Uh, when, after I co-hosted the uh, uh the skills helper triad series for the first time uh you know when when you co-host you or you host you you dig much deeper so because you teach it so you have to really have a very thorough understanding and uh and so i was uh, you know when when i was preparing the sessions i was watching the course i was reading the book and really uh, getting my head around it and and after that came breakthrough july in ecology where we offered breakthrough sessions and and I offered them too, and and some people uh, took it, took me up on that. And there was specifically one person I had no clue who she was. So you know, I I didn't know what she would bring to the table, and you know what, and and I was uh, prepping for the session for the first session, uh, you know, in front of the computer, and I suddenly noticed, suddenly noticed I wasn't nervous because I knew I you know skilled helper, and. And I just knew, and and it, you know. So I was like, oh, I can coach, you know. So for me, that was really a, like, you know, opening a dam, like really understanding the the tremendous value for hosts. Apart from you know, getting giving back to the community and building community, meeting people, but that is the ultimate level of learning for me. 
I love that, Dennis. And the fact that you're saying, you know, proper preparation prevents poor performance. And because you had been going to those skilled helper triads and been preparing and been training and practicing, that when it came time to actually put yourself in the role as coach, you felt quite a bit more confident. And competency, confidence comes when we know we're competent. Yeah. Um, how about uh, Sarah or Michelle or Ed? What's. Uh, yeah, I can go. Yeah, go. Yeah. yeah, no, I think for me, just attending the triad, sometimes I would look at the event, maybe look at the handout, maybe not, but you just kind of show up with an open mind to whatever is going to take place, whatever the uh, modality is that's being demoed. But when you're hosting that level of responsibility of like Dennis was saying, like you have, you have to know what framework you're going to demo because no one's there to help you. So you, you have to kind of submerge yourself in that. And with that deeper understanding, it just sticks better. Because if we, we show up to a tribe and we do the, we model, we either we're coached or we observe or we're coaching, it's helpful. But when you do that level of depth, it sticks better. So I, yes, that, that competency breeds that confidence. And then it comes more when you're actually working with clients, you can pull that up easier because it's like more ingrained. You don't feel like you need to look at the, the specific sets of questions. Sometimes that can be helpful, but you're just able to trust yourself more that you kind of uh, know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. How about you, Michelle? How, how have you uh, developed as a result of being a triad host? Oh, the list, the list of skills. Um, I mean, it, it comes back down to that being starting to get comfortable outside of the comfort zone. It's that being comfortable, being uncomfortable. So that's that confidence, that competence, the camera and having that responsibility that taking on that responsibility, knowing that you're having to dig deep, um, do the research, look into the, the subject for that personal thing. And also that responsibility of knowing that you're sharing it. I'm also a teacher at heart. So it's that, you know, you want to know that you're adding value. It's, it's effective. Um, and then watching the faces of the people because they've understood what you're what you've demoed you or your co-host you the two of you have put together um a space for people to understand the topic have a demonstration of it and then actually go away and use it so yeah it's built up so many so many of those skills it's like a dance a dance of growth the growth spurts um it's been painful sometimes um some of the um modality some of the skills it's like okay I need a little bit more understanding so yes there's been pain but wow the the growth is, is well worth it definitely well Michelle what you're talking about is something that we really believe over in ecology is that um, you know quite honestly to to sit in front of somebody and try to be their coach without having done the work ourselves what is, what is that about? We really do encourage our ecologists to be doing the work themselves. And these triads are definitely an opportunity for us to, to put that into practice and walk our talk. So thank you for highlighting that. Um, Ed, how about you? How have you grown as a result of being a triad host? Oh, there's not enough time to really go into that. Uh, you know, I, I, I honestly, I just, um, um, you know, I, I, I was reaffirmed that I do have, and I talked about this before, that I do have some really good basic competencies and skills already kind of walking into, you know, and most of us that come into these triads have had life experiences um, and we're, we're headed in this direction. Some of us have already been coaching, others haven't, some have been doing it. And it's the feedback that we get both in, in the, in the, um, you know, I, I would say everybody, not just the host, but, it, but, but to be able to, as a host, then provide that. But that feedback to people as you watch them attend your triad sessions and the encouragement that we give to people. And, um, and when we get to be observers in the, uh, in the breakout rooms and we see somebody progressing along and to be able to give them that feedback uh, is incredible because I know what it was like when I got that feedback because I started to trust that what people were saying to me was genuine, that they weren't just blowing smoke when they were talking about what positive, you know, in, in a feedback session, the observer was giving me feedback about skills and things like that, that I was demonstrating. 
And I started to really realize I got some of this stuff. I'm learning some of this stuff. I'm coming along. And then as a host to then see that, um, just it ingrains that within me. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention too, uh, you know, as Michelle said, sometimes it's painful, uh, especially working with new hosts. I, I, I sense it, you know, more so than I, when I remember it, right? Uh, it's the first time that you have a new host coming on and you say, okay, uh, why don't you do the demo this week? Right? And the demonstration is where the host demonstrates for the client, right? After kind of reviewing and, and you work with the host and you kind of discuss what's the purpose of it and all this other stuff, right? And, and everybody's nervous doing the demo the first time and sometimes even the 12th time. And I think the greatest lesson for me, and, and, and I send this out to anybody who's never attended a triad and nervous about attending a triad or anybody who's thinking about being a host who wants to be a host, is that I try to repeat to hosts and to anybody participating in triads is the measure of success is that I give it a try, right? And it goes back to that whole good enough principle. All I have to do is give it a try. And I tell you, there are times now when I'm just, you know, I go into a triad and maybe I've had a rough day. I feel like I've, you know, I've been stumbling my toe all over the place and I'm just not up for it. And, and, and I'm like, do I really have this concept down? And, you know, one of the things that I say to myself and I try to pass along, Ed, you're going to do this demo and all you're going to do is have a conversation with someone. That's it. That's the base bottom line. You're going to be present and have a conversation. You could do that. Yeah, and yeah. so I like to pass that on to the other hosts. It's just about giving it a try. And that's sure. where we learn by trying. Yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely, Ed. Kane Ramsey's watching in. Uh, you guys, just so you know, the whole time you've been getting lots of hearts and thumbs up. Anyways, Kane just says, agreed, it is very difficult to appreciate how we are growing until we get feedback from others and they show how they are growing in response to our efforts. It is very rewarding. So for those of you who are watching, we are talking about triads that happen inside of ecology. This is one of the biggest, biggest opportunities that we see um, ecology members taking advantage of and some that don't. So like anything in life, if you want to create value for yourself, you need to jump in and participate. And this is one of the greatest opportunities. This is the cream de la cream. One of the cream de la cream offerings we have inside of Ecology is opportunities to be a client, practice your coaching, and get feedback as an ob observer. Um, even being an observer, I know for me, I've grown tons as a coach. Just being behind the screen and watching what works and honestly sometimes what doesn't work uh, and that's okay so even if you have a session that goes sideways and it doesn't work it's always about what are the lessons learned what can i improve for next time it's not about right or wrong or good or bad or or any of that it's just about coming like ed says and trying and giving it a shot um, so i'm just gonna toss out one final question um, but before we do before we do, I wanna just take a moment and very, very briefly talk about the Ecology Manifesto. Um, and this is something that we like to read at the beginning of every single triad. For what purpose? Because it grounds us in our vision. It grounds us in why we come together. And, and I'd like to just take a moment here and share it with you now. So Dennis, if you could please do us the honors of going ahead and reading for everybody the Ecology Manifesto. Sure. Thanks. We believe that every individual has an innate desire to develop, enhance, and evolve into their best possible self. We bring together different psychology-based disciplines to offer a multifaceted approach to training. We believe that the role of the ecologist is to aid others to progress and transform their lives. We are committed to the advancement of all helping professions through community, accountability, and mutual support. We are advocates of ongoing learning, training, and continuous professional development. Our objective is effective helping rather than academic attainment. We believe in the principle of influencing for impact and in showing, developing, and encouraging leadership in our professions, our communities, and our social groups. We are wholly committed to values of empowerment, transparency, responsibility, competence, authenticity, and pioneering spirit. We hold it to be true that all people are created equal, yet recognize that not all people have equality of opportunity. 
We are committed to providing opportunity to train those people in helping skills who have historically been denied by high cost barriers. We are committed to the principle of personal responsibility. We affirm that personal responsibility leads to maturity. We do no harm, seek no power, and hold all equal and deserving of the possibilities of their potential. We embrace the attitude of unconditional acceptance, the healing virtue of active listening, and the transformative nature of authentic communication. Personal growth and the transformative power of skilled helping are the right and responsibility of us all. All right, does anybody else here want to go woohoo? <laughs> So that, that is the Ecology Manifesto, and we do read that at the beginning of every triad. And the reason we do that is because it truly is, that is the purpose of us gathering to uh, train and help each other and learn and grow. So my final question, uh, as we wrap up this beautiful panel discussion, um, is what is your um, favorite, well, I guess it's two questions. What's your favorite memory within a triad? Uh, like your favorite takeaway is one of our questions we like to ask. And how has uh, being an ecology member impacted your life? Good questions. Who's going to take that one on? So favorite memory of a triad and how has being an ecology member impacted your life? Well, I can, I can go. Oh, sorry. Rock, paper, scissors, Dennis? No? Okay. <laughs> um, well, I, I have a hard time picking like one favorite memory, but I think the overall, like my biggest takeaway, if we kind of reframe it a little bit, it's just to see that that growth of the people that that come in and and as a as a host you take a little bit more pride as opposed to seeing your fellow peers while it's still obviously not a hierarchy there's still like a level of reaffirming that you've been able to set up this environment where they're able to learn and grow and watch them kind of you know grow in their confidence and yeah it's a beautiful it's a beautiful um, experience and what has ecology the biggest that ecology has done for me yeah how how is ecology being an ecologist impacted your life okay so that's it's it's put my whole life on a whole new trajectory because i took the udemy course around november december of last year but didn't join ecology until January and it was a course that I found very interesting that I had lots of good takeaways and good information uh, but once I joined ecology it just took my whole from being a course that was kind of interesting to being like this is what I want to do with my life these are my people that like I can really be myself here and really build that community and I've, I've got so many connections that through ecology, that it really is putting my whole life on a whole new trajectory that I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be on if it wasn't for this. And just taking a course versus ecology, it's a whole new paradigm because that's where you actually get to try on your sea legs. It's not that, you know, you're not reading about the bike, you're on the bike. And then the other people that are there to cheer you on, it's, uh, it's, it's the connections for sure and the sense of community. Thank you very much for sharing that, Sarah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, would go, I would go next. Um, for me, I, would, I wouldn't say one uh, favorite takeaway or biggest takeaway um, from, the, from the triads. It's um, a result, I would say. Uh, it's a fulfillment of, of seeing uh, people who come first in the triad. They're all afraid. They're, they're, they don't know, you know what they're doing. And, and, and now, uh, beginning of next year, I'm going to be co-hosting a triad series with, with one of these uh, people. And I see many others who, who step up as co-hosts uh, that I've seen as they first came in after they first took a course uh, from Kane. And it's just that fulfillment to see the growth and, and the transformation and then, then stepping up, just like we did here. And it's it's really fulfilling, and 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 now I really understand what Kane talks about when he says fulfillment, about and and teaching others how to teach, how to fish, right? That's that's what we're doing here. Uh, and um, about the the second question, it's really yeah, uh, changed my life completely, basically. You know, uh, being an ecology member, first of all, 
through the first course uh, that I took uh, through Udemy, which was a life coaching course, I took responsibility for my life for the first time ever, uh, which is really empowering. And, uh, and uh, yeah, um, you know, when I first uh, took that course, I was thinking of becoming a, a, a life coach three years down the road. Uh, and, and because, you know, I had never heard of a school that, uh, that really had training, ongoing training, and I don't know of any other school that, uh, that has that. And, and that's the real power of, of ecology for me, that it's like, instead of three years, it's not even a year and I'm already coaching. So it's just, yeah, amazing. And the community, I found real friends and actually we're with with some of them we're building a global impact movement that's what also came say build impact and global impact so yeah thank you ecology brilliant thank you dennis ed or michelle um, okay i'll go next Dennis. okay i'll leave you to the end okay um okay the how has it changed? Again, I think pretty much the same there. It's been life changing. I never believed when I took Kane's courses that I could actually make, make an impact um, on people. Um, so like we said before, it starts with self. Um, that change has to happen on that level. So, so yeah, it's been life changing. I think my core values, the top five core values, all of it just sums up those words, that connection growth i find ecology and the triad it's a place where you can be authentic what's all everything it's just being authentic um it's a place where you feel free and at peace and my favorite memory from all the triads is watching people when they join the triad for the first time really small on the screen they go into the breakout rooms and they come out and they're huge and we actually call them shiny, happy people because everybody is beaming. There's like a torch. When everyone comes out of a breakout room, it's like there's somebody shining the light on everybody and that you can't, you can't bottle and sell. Um, you have to experience so, and you only get to experience it here in ecology. So that's thanks to Kane and you guys and, and everybody who's involved making it happen. So thank you. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. And over to you, Gosh, Ed. Oh, such wonderful things you're saying. It's just uh, really wonderful. Uh, I, I would say uh, from, um, you know, it's hard to pick favorite, you know, favorite moments and experiences uh, in triads, but I am going to, only because it's so recent. So this morning I was hosting the uh, NLP triads and, um, uh, and going into the demo, I was a little bit nervous because uh, uh, I wasn't expecting to do the de demo. And so I said, OK, you know, we're just going to have a conversation. Um, and the impact that that demo had on the person. Um, and you don't know it's often, you know, oftentimes when you're coaching, even you don't you don't know exactly where it's going to go. Uh, and the impact that exercise had on the on the, the person who volunteered as a client just blew me away. Uh, and it was. Um, you know, and I don't think I necessarily used any great expertise. I thought I did a fine job, but it was the nature of what we do. And it's the impact uh, that it had on this one person. Um, and I, I could say, you know, I've had similar experiences like that that are life changing in and of itself. It really hits stuff that is so vital to who we are. So, um, and it's more and more experiences like that. And I get that in coaching as well. Uh, coaching one on one with folks is is the impact that we have uh, on helping uh, people help themselves go through these processes. Um, how has ecology changed my life? I, I love the way Sarah put it, it changed the, the trajectory of my life. Uh, it really has. I had, before coming here, I had, I had found, I identified my passion as being coaching and that's where I wanted to go. And uh, starting out in Udemy, uh, taking courses and then hooking up into the PMP group and, uh, and then getting into ecology, it just, exploded the possibilities for me um, and the belief and, and the and the learning and, and coming to a place where I believe that I'm a good coach uh, and that I have skills uh, to help people and um, and and also the other element for fulfilling my passions is uh, getting involved behind the scenes uh, here in ecology uh, not just with hosting but then developing uh, triads and working and developing in the structure, as Tony Lee talked about, becoming a senior faculty, um, 
because of the level of involvement uh, that I, I, I got involved because I, I have the vision, I have the excitement, I see the passion, and, and I see the vision that others have laid ahead of me, uh, and then my own, <clears throat> my own feelings and senses on that. And for me, uh, I need both. I need that one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching uh, uh, interaction, but I also need to be part of the larger picture. Uh, that's just something that's important to me in, in helping to build structures and sustainability. And I never could have imagined coming into ecology that my life would be where it is today. And the amount of time and energy and love that gets expressed within this community um, and uh, that we're all striving to make huge impacts on every person that we come in contact. Uh, with it's uh, it's just it's just dynamite and uh, it may sound idealistic but like as Michelle says you know it's hard work it's hard work continuing to work on myself and to work on the program and bring these all of these kind of efforts uh, to uh, to a fruition but it is so worth it and there is so much value in ecology um, I almost kind of feel that if someone is in ecology and they don't feel it's a value they're not working it right. <laughs> um, because there is so much richness, richness here uh, for uh, for such a, a real uh, minimal uh, output of uh, of our own re personal resources. Thanks, Tony Lee. Awesome stuff, Ed. Thank you so much. Um, I'll just go really quick, and then we should uh, we'll we'll wrap this conversation up. But one of my favorite memories of the triad was actually one that I co-hosted with Ed. And I had gone in with the intention to do the demo. He had never hosted a triad. And I said, eh, why don't you do the demo? And he was like, me? And you know what? He rocked it. Like, it was just, I don't know. It was just this feeling of like, it's, it's, um, it's this, okay? And this is the takeaway that a call, how ecology has impacted my life, okay? And this is huge. For a self-centered woman like myself, I, I've grown up. I've, I feel like within the last year even of being inside of ecology, I've seen what it means to become mature and realize it's not all about me. And there was a point where um, it was all about me. And being in ecology, I've realized it's actually, it's about, a, it's like what Dennis was talking about, about that feeling of fulfillment when, I, I, I see that experience of teaching somebody how to learn how to teach other people to fish, right? And being a part of a community where the vision, well, like you said, we read the manifesto and the vision really is about being able to uh, uh, provide these opportunities to people who are hungry, really hungry for this knowledge, really hungry to be able to implement this stuff in their lives. Um, come and take advantage of these. We were, we were talking just before we went live and Ed had mentioned that in various other um, organizations that he's researched to have the opportunity to be observed, it's gonna cost you a couple hundred dollars, right? Whereas we're offering these opportunities several times a week on the ecology calendar. So for those of you who are watching, um, if you're not already inside of ecology, birthday week, we have got a couple more events where we are have opened up the doors to the public. If you'd like to come in and take advantage of seeing what it is like, it is not too late to do that. Um, if you are an ecology member and you have not yet joined a triad, um, come and take a chance, ride the bikes. You, you never know, you might just change the trajectory and the paradigm of your life. So on that note, thank you very much to each and every one of you. Um, there has been some really beautiful comments. I have not read them all out because there are so many. So I hope you each go and, and read through the comments. Thank you so much for your service and for being a part of this amazing community and making it what it is. Thank you, Ed, for, for all of your hard work as well. Take care, guys. Happy birthday to Ecology. Take care and we'll talk to you Happy soon. Happy birthday, Ecology. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday. Thank you, Tony Lee. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, for Tony all you do. Thanks, Thank everybody. You.